Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander Score Studio. Welcome to the show. So today's episode comes to you courtesy of Michael, who's been supporting this channel as a general tier patron. I truly couldn't do this without the support from amazing patrons like Michael. So again, Michael, thank you so much. And for the personalized DAC tech, Michael chose certain the shipwright with a focus on trying to break parity and enjoying some mind games on our opponents. And yeah, that's a fantastic commander to do just that. A 3-4 Elf Noble Vigilance that costs 5 mana in total in Simic when it enters the battlefield or attacks. Each player secretly votes for a player, then those votes are revealed. Each player draws a card for each vote they received. Each player who received no votes may put a permanent card from their hand on the battlefield. So, depending on how these secret votes go, you might draw some cards, you might draw no cards, but you might get to just cheat something into play, like, you know, the blue braids effect, essentially. Just cheat something massive into play. Your opponents can do the same thing, but again, we've got ways to break parity. We've got ways to take more advantage of it. we got ways to react to what our opponents are doing. And uh, maybe to get some of that juicy value that they might be getting and just saying, oh, I like that too. I like that too. Or I'd like you not to have it. And, uh, and yeah, you can do a lot of exciting things with this. There's a lot of cool directions that you could take this commander. Now on this episode again, these deck techs are going to be very budget friendly. This is a card. This is a deck, I should say, that has every single card in it, including the commander that's less than $1. So it's only $21.91 according to Moxfield. Again, very budget friendly. And yeah, if you are interested in this deck, make sure you check out that deck list link in the description below. Keep in mind that that deck list does not include the cost of basic lands. It also doesn't include the cost of shipping. So keep that in mind. That being said, still, yeah, $21.91, incredibly budget friendly still. Now, with all that said, let's jump into the tactics. First up, with tactic number one, we've got Ship Shape. And uh, yeah, first up, there's Wayfarer's Bottle, of course. Pay two tab sacrifice. Go get a basic land and apply tap. Yeah, no matter what our land start is, even if we start off two islands, this can be a great card to help us ramp as well. Next up, Rampant Growth. This one does require a forest. That's okay, though. Rampant Growth is going to go to say basic and apply tap. Basically, ramp is named after a fantastically efficient card. Speaking of which, Edge of Autumn makes the exact same thing. If we've got four fewer lands, we get to do that. And later on in the game, when we don't need to ramp, well, we can just sacrifice a land to cycle this away and draw something better. Next up, we've got Cultivate. Go get two basics. One goes into play tap. One goes into our hand to set ourselves up for our next land drop. Then there's Harrow. Harrow, sacrifice one land. Go get two basics into play untapped at instant speed so we can use that mana right away. Kodama's Reach. Basically the exact same thing as Cultivate. It is an arcane, so that doesn't really matter for our, you know, deck at all. But still, another great way to help us ramp and fix our mana. Another great three mana spell for us, though. Search for tomorrow. On turn three, sure, cast it. Go get a basic and play untapped so you can use it right away. Or turn one is where this really shines. Suspend two for a single green mana. Set yourself up for two turns later to get that land in a play and to massively ramp ahead of your opponents. Then there's Farhaven Elf. Got some creatures that can help us out as well because, again, our commander has an ETB that we can very easily use and abuse. And we've got some creatures that have ETBs as well. Go get a basic into play tap with this one. Then there's Spring Bloom Druid. Basically a, well, I was going to say Harrow. It's more like a Roiling Regrowth. Sacrifice one land, go get two basics into play tap. So, again, ramping and fixing your mana. Topiary Stomper, Stomper is kind of like a bigger Farhaven off in a way. 4-4 four, four Vigilance. Can't attack or block unless you got seven or more lands. Easy for us to get there, though. And uh, again, on top of that, ETBs, go get that basic into play tap. Finally, we've got Beanstalk Giant. Yet another creature that can help us with lands because it's got adventure. Search your life for a basic, put on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. And also, when you get this into play, it's a star star with power times equal to the number of lands we control. So this can be huge and a big heavy hitter for us. Now let's move on to tactic number two, though. Set sail. And set sail, we shall with the Smuggler. A 1-1 that has a uh, pay for mana tap, blink a creature. So yeah, use and abuse those juicy ETBs. Again, outside of our commander, we've got a ton of great ones to utilize. Can also use this to protect our commander as well. Speaking of which, planner incision. Two mana, basically blink an artifact or a creature and say... You know what? Uh, yeah, you know what? I want your ETB again. Either whether that's our commanders or again, one of our massive ones that we'll talk about here in a bit. Or again, a great way to protect something too. Sirens Roost, unfortunately, our commander is not a pirate, so we don't get that extra value. Still, blinking something for two mana is fantastic. Teferi's Time Twist. Blink basically any of our things. It's kind of like the, a delayed blink effect in a way as well. That is going to go away and come back at the end step, so it can be a good way to avoid, avoid a board wipe if possible. And also, again, just yeah, two mana, use and abuse an ETB. 
Our commanders is great. We've got other great ones too. Then there's Blur, three mana. So one extra mana, but you get an extra value out of this. Blink something as well as, hey, draw a card as well. So blink one of your creatures. Next up, Displace. Blink two of your creatures. Again, we talked about how our commander is a great ETB to use and abuse. Also, our other creatures do too. Many of them do. So yeah, make sure you're keeping that in mind with that. And Ghostly Flicker. Ghostly Flicker, again, this one's even more flexible. You can blink two target artifacts, creatures, and or lands you control. So again, if you don't have an artifact or another creature to target with this, just get a land back and essentially just untap it in any way. You know, it blinks, it brings it back. It's basically come back and play untapped as long as it doesn't inherently come to play tap. You know what I mean? Next up, a very repeatable, usable, and abusable Golden Argosy. 3-6 vehicle for 4 mana. Whenever it attacks, exile each creature that crewed this turn, turn the battlefield tapped on its control to be an extend step. Crew 1. So again, a way to say, you know what? All these creatures have amazing ETBs. Let's just get them all again, including our commanders. They're going to crew it. It's got a crew cost of 1. So basically, as many creatures as you want can crew it. So do so. And uh, yeah, really take advantage of that. And 4 mana, we've got to lose this strategy. And basically, a displace plus a draw. So kind of like blur plus displace. Blink 2 creatures, draw a card. And then finally, set all the pro trident. A 3-3 three, three flash. ETBs, exile target historic permanent you control if you do. Returns the battlefield, arms of control to be an extend step. Our commander is, of course, historic, being a legendary. So yeah, let's just flash this in, essentially. Save your commander from maybe a board wipe, or again, just utilize that ETB again. Next up, though, if you want to do tactic number three, come sail away. And we are not done with setting sail just yet, because we've got more ways to use and abuse that ETB. Gerard's Hourglass is a really fun one. A legendary artifact for one flash. If a player would begin next turn, that player skips the extra turn instead. So basically, hey, uh, yeah, sorry about all your time warps and whatnot. Eh, you don't get them. Then pay four, tap, exile, return to the battlefield, tap all artifact, creature, enchantment, and land cards into your graver that are put there from the battlefield this turn. Basically, a great way to save our entire you know army from a board wipe. That can be a great way to do so. Or, yeah, just again say, oh, oh no, my commander got taken out in combat. Well, I'd like that ETB, so let's get it back again with this. Speaking of getting it back, they'll release the win. A very flexible card for us. Three mana instant exile target, non and permanent. For as long as it exiled, its owner may cast paying its mana cost. So basically, a way to say, hey, you know what? I, I don't like that temporarily. Whatever you got over there, I, I don't want it right there right now. So let's just like get rid of that temporarily. Or, hey, again, with your commander or with any of other giant ETB things, just say, hey, okay, let's get rid of that. And then I'll play it when I want to again. Get that ETB again. But now to move on to tech number four, you look familiar, and yeah, we are in blue. So we've got access to colognes, yet another great way to use and abuse ETBs, and also a way to just take advantage of the biggest creatures on the board. Now, first up, we got Mir uh, Mirror Image, which is an incredible clone. Enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature you control. So again, our creatures, again, it can be a copy of any of our amazing creatures, which have some great ETBs, including our commander. Now we'll be a legendary, and the legendary rule will apply, and we'll lose it. That's okay, though, because uh, we still get that ETB, so keep that in mind. Or how about uh, just regular clone? This one just can copy any creature on the board, including your opponents. So yeah, if your opponents are cheating some giant things into play, all of a sudden, we like that giant thing now too. Thank you. Speaking of giant things, Gigantoplasm, basically it's a regular clone, but also pay X into it and turn that creature into an XX. So this can be a great way to say, hell, this mana that we got, let's just dump it into this and hit our opponent for a ton or just be a very effective blocker. Next up, Machine Gun's Effigy, basically a mana rock clone, artifact for four, Enter the battlefield is a copy of any creature of the battlefield except an artifact that has tap add blue. So again, you can still use and abuse an ETB like your commanders or something like this. Moving on, we've got Mirror Hall Mimic, a 0-0 spirit for 4 mana. Enter the battlefield is a copy of any creature of the battlefield except a spirit of other types. And also, uh, yeah, it's not just being a regular clone. The other side, out of our graveyard, we disturb it, and it's an enchantment aura. Beginning of your upkeep, create tokens, copy of enchant creatures, except a spirit. Um, yes, please. Basically, hey, clone your commander. Awesome, all right? Oh no, my spirit went to the graveyard. Okay, cool. All right, I'll disturb it on my graveyard, onto my commander. All of a sudden, at the beginning of my upkeep every turn, I get a copy of my commander for that amazing ETB, or again, whatever other creature you want. Next up, Undercover Operative. This one can clone anything, but if we clone one of our own things, hey, uh, now the sun's got a shield counter, so it's even harder to deal with. Then we've got Vizier Many Faces. Again, when this one is dealt with, we can still utilize it out of our graveyard. Essentially, it's a clone, and then also Embalment, so it's a zombie clone as well. So there you go. Then we got Morite of the Frost. This one is a clone that can clone anything, any of our permanents that we control. 
any of them does not matter what it is whether it's a creature or non-creature does not matter clone it and yeah there's some heavy hitting uh, well enchantments especially i'll talk about later that you might want to clone regardless if it does clone a creature extra plus two counters on it extra two plus one counters on it you know what i mean the seven shapeter is another great one a zero zero clone that uh, is very flexible etbs make it a copy of any creature or when it's turned face up make it a copy of any creature because this one can morph as well and it can keep flipping back down if we want to at our upkeep then we've got Sakashima's Protege. We can flash this one in for six mana. It's got Cascade, so some extra juicy value off the top of the library with this. On top of that, enter the battlefield is a copy of any permanent that enters the battlefield this turn. So again, it can count those cascading cards. Or maybe something an opponent had come into play, because we can flash this in, so keep that in mind. Finally, Hawking Metamorph. One that can be really fun for us to cheat in with our commander because, well, then say 7 7 clone. Or if we want to pay the lesser cost, we can pay this as just a four mana clone. That's going to be a 3 3. So there you go. But now let's move on to tactic number five, Buried Treasure, because, yeah, we've already talked about so many ways to generate so much value, including with our commander. We can do even more, though. With Candlekeep Sage, a great card, a background says, Commander creatures you own have. When this creature enters, leave the battlefield, draw a card. A simple blink spell now just going to draw us two extra cards because our commander is going to leave the battlefield and come into the battlefield. Yeah, this can give us some absurd amount of value throughout the game. Speaking of which, Voice of Many, a simple 3-3 for four mana ETBs, but you know what? Let's draw some cards. If we have more uh, creatures than our opponents, then we're going to draw cards for each opponent. We have more creatures than, so this can draw us up to three cards and just an ETB. And again, one that we can easily use and abuse. Blink spells, bounce spells, clone spells, all the things. There we got Garrick's Pack Leader. One that can be especially effective with cloning effects because, uh, yeah, one of these is great. Two is amazing. Three is just absurd. Four, four, beasts. Whenever another creature power three or greater is about to your control, draw a card. Yep. Extra copies of this can be just absolutely great. Again, especially considering blink effects. And we've got a lot of those. We can also take advantage of them with Karuga the Macro Sage. A 5-4 Dinosaur Hippo, because that's the thing. ETBs draw a card for each permanent you control with converted mana cost 3 or greater. So, hey, ETBs draw like 5, 6, 7, 8 cards. And yeah, very easily use and abuse this ETB. Speaking of which, Mold Drifter. Maybe a bit more consistent. Hey, uh... ETBs draw two cards. It's still very nice. Again, for a 2-2 flyer. You can also evoke it out if you just want that divination efficiency, essentially, at three mana. Then there's Tatiova Benthic Druid. We've got plenty of ways to ramp. Plenty of ways to get a lot of lands into play. Now take advantage of that even more. Whatever a land enters the battlefield under your control, gain one life and draw a card. Juicy value there. Then there's Soul of the Harvest. Yet another one that we can say, hey, let's just clone it and get a lot of extra value out of this. A 6-6 Trampling Elemental. Whatever another non-tone creature is about under your control, draw a card. So yeah, extra copies of this. Deadly. Then we've got Inspired Sphinx, a 5-5 five, five Flyer for 7 mana that also can draw us a ton of cards. One for each opponent we have. So again, if every opponent is still around, cool, draw 3. Also, you can pay mana into this to make some Thopters as well. What's not to love about that? Speaking of that, Lord of Change. This one, well, it is called Lord of Change, but the amount that it gives you does not change. Because when it enters the battlefield, you draw 3 cards. There's a ton of value, especially when this is a 6-6 Flyer with Ward 3. Yeah, abuse this one a lot. Abuse the ETB a lot. Again, Flink effects, Clone effects. Have fun with that. Then there's Sandstone Oracle, one that can really even things up. And let's say your opponents are voting for each other and letting themselves draw cards and whatnot. You know what? Let's just take advantage of their big hand sizes, though. Enters the battlefield, choose an opponent. If that player has more cards in hand than you, draw cards, equal difference. Yeah, that can be quite fun. Then finally, Sphinx of Athun, basically a creature with a factor fiction as an ETB on it. So ETBs, top five cards. The opponent separates into two piles. One goes in your hand, one is in your graveyard. A lot of fun for you to just use that ETB again and again and again and just make your opponents sweat in seeing all the amazing juicy cards you're going to be getting. Now, as good as all these cards are, there's one, in my opinion, that stands by the rest, and that is the Golden Pig of this stack, which, of course, is the number one card ever 99, which is Thought Reflection. My goodness, is this card great, this stack, and enchantment it for seven mana in total for blue, blue, blue. If you draw a card, draw two cards instead. So incredibly simple, incredibly efficient, incredibly effective. Yeah, and pretty crazy with this commander. Again, our commander can say, hey, um, sometimes you're going to want to vote for me because you might think I've got something giant in my hand. But if you do vote for me with this in play, now all of a sudden I'm drawing two cards. So you can kind of, again, play that mind game with your opponents where you're like, hey, um, sure, you vote for me. Great. Thank you for the two cards. But if you don't vote for me, uh, yeah, I'm going to cheat something massive into play. This just might be something massive that you cheat into play, obviously, too. Ways to take advantage of all those different draw effects we just talked about. Yeah, this just doubles up all that, doubles them up so efficiently, so effectively. An amazing card. One that, again, can just really, really play mind games with your opponents. And, uh, yeah, definitely worthy of the title of Golden Pick.
Next up, we've already talked about some ways to actually throw a wrench to our opponent's mind, so let's really dig into it in tactic number seven, Tidal Wave. Alchemist Retrieval, a great card. Just a single mana, we can bounce one of our own non-land permanents. Two mana, bounce any opponent's non-land permanent. So yeah, if we want to actually say, hey, we've got this great ETB and I want it again, cool, just bounce it for one mana. If not, yeah, that thing over there is scary. Bounce it back. Again, ways to say, yeah, you can cheat things into play with this commander, but uh, I'm going to determine if they stay or not. Next up, Geist Wave. Again, very similar. Hey, if we target opponent's thing, great. No extra value. But if we target our own things, extra value. Draw a card with that. Then we've got Snap. Bounce any creature on the board for just two mana. On top of that, untap two lands. So get your mana back. Then we've got Aether Gale. Speaking of mana, just five to bounce six non-land permanents. Again, a way to say... Yeah, you cheated some things into play that I didn't like. So uh, let's get rid of those. And then, hey, you know what? I want to get my commander's ETB again. Let's bounce it back to my hand, recast my commander, have fun with that. When it comes to bounce effects, though, gross. Scourge of Fleets. This one's insane. 6-6. Six, six. ETBs return each creature runs control with toughness. Extra less for those owner's hand. Rex the number of islands you control. Basically, uh, hey... I got plenty of ways to ramp, plenty of ways to get a ton of islands into play, plenty of ways to say, yeah, you're never going to keep your creatures in play. Just keep bouncing this, keep, you know, blinking it, keep cloning it, whatever you need to do. Keep getting this effect to just wipe your opponent's boards again and again and again. Speaking of which, Thorn Mammoth, one that is lovely to clone. A 6-6 Trampling Elephant, whenever any other creature is about to control, Thorn Mammoth fights up to one target creature control. Essentially, any opponent's creature that has six toughness or less and, and less than you know six power is going to be on the chopping block because you are just going to make more copies of this. You are going to get more creatures into play. You're going to have all those Thorn Mammoths fight all your opponent's creatures and take them all out. Goodbye, opponent's creatures. Speaking of goodbye, Nasty Terastodon, a 9-9 nine, nine for 8 elephant. And just about a few minutes to three target non-creature permanents for each permanent from the grave this way. Give them a 3-3 three, three elephant. Yeah, that, that's a very low, uh, you know, prize to win for getting something destroyed of your own. So we can say, get rid of their biggest things, maybe some things they cheated into play thanks to us. And all of a sudden, hey, just keep some tiny little 3-3s three -threes for you. Oh, and we're not really that worried about that. We've got blink effects, we've got bounce effects, we've got ways to deal with those. Um, yeah, and also I've got a giant 9-9, which I can clone and have even more. <laughs> then we've got Woodfall Prime, it's yet another way to really take advantage of an ETB. 6-6 six, six, Trampling, Tree Folk Shaman, ETB, Story Target, Non-Creature Permanent. No downside to it this time. We're not giving our opponents anything for that. On top of that, if they deal with it, persist. Comes right back with a Master Master Counter on it. We can also get rid of that counter very easily again with a Bounce Effect or a Blink Effect. So yeah, have fun with that. Destroying things again and again and again. But now let's move on to tactic number eight, heavy hitters. And my goodness, so there's some massive heavy hitters that we can cheat to play with this commander. Opponents better look out. An 8-8 eight, eight for 8 mana. Sorry, 7 mana actually. Or again, free with your commander. Dawn, Glade, Rage, and Elk. ETBs, you become the Monarch. Lovely extra value being the Monarch. And on top of that, hey, uh, if we are the Monarch, uh, all of our things have hexproof. So good luck to your opponents trying to target anything. Next up. Good luck to them trying to get through as well with Hornet Queen. A 2-2 Insect with Flying Death Touch for 7 mana. Again, cheat this into play your commander and it's free. Make uh, 4 Insects with it as well. Flying Death Touching Insects as well. So 5 in total. And again, it's an ETB. It's very easily usable and abusable. So make sure you are doing that. Next up, Scar of the Ages. My goodness, this is gross when you're set up properly. Enters the battle for a turn up to 2 target. Instant resource cards from your graveyard to your hand. This is basically, hey, uh, blink things, then blink them again, blink them again. If you get a ghostly flicker with this, um, hey, blink this plus your commander or whatever other creature has a massive ETB. Again and again and again. Keep getting that ghostly flicker back or whatever. It's called Lost Robe. Another great way to get some extra value. ETBs, cast target, instant sorcery, artifact card from your graveyard that paying its mana cost. And if it's instant sorcery, cast that way it's exiled. Sure. Basically a way to say, yeah, let's get that blink effect again. Let's get that giant card again. Have fun. Next up, we've got Swarm Intelligence, a lovely card doubling up on all of our instant sorceries. Yes, it's something great and juicy to just cheat and play with our commander and then say, hey, oh, I go see Flicker. I'll blink four creatures. Great. Then we've got Wondrous Crucible. My goodness, is this a cool card. Artifact for seven. Permanent control of Ward to protect all of our things again. Extra taxing effect that says, hey, do you really want to try to target my commander with your spell? Okay, go for it. Pay the extra two. Okay, cool. I'll blink my commander. It's fine. Again, your opponents know you have all these kind of effects that can mess with them trying to target your things anyways, and now they have to pay two extra mana. Not going to be worth it for them. On top of that, at the beginning of your end step, mill two cards and exile a non-land card at random from your graveyard. Copy it, cast the copy that paying its mana cost. Extra free, juicy value for you. Then there's Archetype of Endurance, another great way to protect our team. 6-5, boar, creature control of hexproof. Creature opponents control, lose hexproof, can't have or gain hexproof. So we can target opponents' things, they can't target ours. And then finally, Sandworm Convergence. An incredible card. First of all, Creatures of Flying can't attack your planes or your control. So, 
Ah, oh, hey, uh, opponent's got the Earth Dragon deck over there. I'm sorry, you can't attack me at all. On top of that, at the beginning of your end step, you get a 5-5 five, five Worm, so you got the air protected, you're gonna be getting a ground army. What's not to love about something like this? now we've talked about every single non-land card in this deck let's talk about some great lands including access tunnel again our commander just has three power that's okay let's take advantage of that with this tefra coast or pay three tap tart creature with power three or less can't be blocked this turn get your commander through so you can make sure you can utilize that attack trigger as well or how about rogue's passage yeah you can still get your commander through or anything else tap break all this pay four tap dark creature can't be blocked this turn so again get your commander through protect it in combat to get that trigger or yeah just swing through with your terrestrial and take an opponent out with that nine power juiciness absolutely lovely but now this episode is coming to a close it's time for me to hear from you so in the comments below let me know what your thoughts are on this deck and if you enjoyed it make sure you check out that deckless link in the description below again yeah certain the shipwright is a really cool commander you can do some really crazy things some cool mind games some breaking parody a lot of fun with this one so yeah make sure you check out that deckless and of course as always thanks again and have a good one this show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you if you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all of their support.